The competition on Chinese smartphone market is much tougher than it seems to be. When one of the major manufacturers, for example Meizu, delivers a product on some hardware platform like Helio X20, other companies are ready to spoil its sales. Today we'll take a look at the Redmi Pro, a Xiaomi's response to Meizu's MX6 and Pro 6. Let's figure out whether the Chinese company managed to create a decent alternative to the product of its competitor. Design has always been one of the Meizu's advantages and Redmi Pro is also highly competitive in this regard. The body is solid and milled from one metal unit without any gaps and splits. The whole rear panel is sanded and this decision has two aspects. Good one is that an opalescent metal and the entire body look pretty awesome. Bad one is that granite aluminum scratches very quickly. Face panel glass is rounded at the edges and has very good oleophobic coat. The same coating is applied to the Xiaomi Mi 5 glass. Fingerprint scanner now is at the front panel. It became much easier to use and therefore less failures appear. To activate the scanner you need to press home button because, unlike many competitors, sensor isn't always in standby mode. Among other useful things, it is important to mention infrared port. The corresponding app has a wide list of supporting devices and manufacturers, so it is likely that Redmi Pro will be useful and friendly with your household appliances. As Redmi Pro is 5.5 inch phone, there are no demands for it to be convenient in using with a single hand. But in defense of our hero who will still get its scoldings, I would say that this is not the biggest 5.5 inch device and certainly not the thickest. Despite its dimensions, it fits nicely in palm, especially with the one hand control mode available. And now let's give this gadget a true hell. Redmi Pro screen is made by OLED technology and there is absolutely nothing good about that. Matrix resolution is full HD but its quality is so so miserable that small elements like phones often look sloppy, and pentile topology red dots are too noticeable as well. Vertically the color reproduction shows a transition from cold to warm colors, but after an incline the cold tones appear, which isn't appropriate for all its screens. Brightness control makes only worse. As you reduce backlight intensity, the flicker frequency of the screen falls down, which you can see on our camera. At first glance, this doesn't seem to be a problem, it is invisible for an eye but in real life after a long term use at medium or low backlight eyes become too tired which badly affects the eyesight. Also the screen has a typical OLED over saturation. You can reduce it in settings by enabling standard mode or add more intensity with increased contrast mode. Here you can change white balance as well. There are two types of Redmi Pro, one with Helio X20 processor and other with X25. Both has Mali T880 MP4 graphics. There can be three or or 4 gigs of RAM, 32 or 64 gigs of storage for the first type and only 128 gigs for the second one. Our testing model is based on X20 and has 3 gigs of RAM. It sounds all good, but in practice a top MediaTek chip is hardly the same as medium class from Qualcomm. Benchmark results and daily usage show this up. Interface and simple apps work nice, but there can be problems with some games. Old and simple games run well, the picture is smooth, graphics is crisp, but something heavier, for example World of Tanks, works quite crappy. At the middle graphics you can only dream about stable 60 FPS or at least 40. In serious team fights, frame rate can fall even below 25 FPS. Mali optimized games like Asphalt 8 work a little better, but sometimes also have lags. The device's autonomy is its weak spot, especially when it comes to the discharge while asleep. It took smartphone two days of just lying in a backpack to discharge from 80% to zero, assuming that no SIM card was set, Wi-Fi and other wireless modules were turned off. Upon the active use, Redmi Pro will serve you no more than a day and most likely from the morning until the time you come back home. In short, the battery with 40-50 mAh discharges very fast, which shatters all expectations. Battery benchmarks gave the following scores and this is exactly when theory doesn't match practice. Gadgets hitting under the loads is more dangerous to smartphone than to your hands. Even being heated, the device seems just warm to the owner, but unfortunately for hardware too hot. Throttling turns on very quickly, and if during the first game in World of Tanks there are no less than 30 FPS, the second one usually shows 20-25. Multimedia features bring even more issues. Let's start from the camera. Here we have two cameras. In theory, this is necessary for blurring the background behind the main object, 
but in practice we get two problems. The first one, open aperture mode will still work even if you close additional camera with duct tape. And the second, it doesn't matter whether the camera is open or not, automatic blurring spoils the picture in 90% cases. In short, the second camera and its unique feature is a complete crap which doesn't worth your money. There is also a post-production mode for editing photos taken by two cameras where you can see them in virtual perspective mode and change the aperture after shooting. But as the whole shooting works lame, editing its results makes no much sense. If you close your eyes on that, the smartphone's main camera is at the same level as in Redmi Note 3 Pro, or maybe a bit worse. Under good lighting conditions, taking pictures are beautiful, especially in the HDR mode. The dynamic range is relatively wide, and the whole potential of the camera is not that bad, especially for the middle-class smartphone. Video capturing resolution is full HD. It shoots well, but without any surprises. There is only one multimedia speaker. It is installed under the right perforated area at the bottom side of the body. Speaker sounds loud and actually pretty nice. You will hear a ringtone even in a busy city street, and the alarm clock won't offend the ear in the morning, so I can surely say that the speaker handles its main task. The sound in headphones is absolutely the same as in other Xiaomi devices. It is clear, loud and well balanced. There is no problems in low, middle and high frequencies. And traditionally there are presets for branded headphones which popularity is so high that I am sure it will be appreciated by many fans of Chinese tech. The smartphone is operated by Android 6.0 with installed MIUI 8. After an update few new things appeared. One of them is a multi-user mode. Mode. So now it is possible to restrict access to files, photos, etc. for the second user. Cool fact is that now you can create duplicates of virtual applications to run two separate windows of the same program in one time. It can be very useful in situations like working with documents. Settings menu has changed. It is now a true copy of Lime OS version. Notification bar has also a new design. Messages and quick settings icons are now on the one screen and buttons are implemented as a scroll in horizontal line. Above all, there is a little weather widget that looks pretty good here. The rest of the system hasn't changed much, except the design and modernized icons. Other things like desktop settings menu, themes and multitasking menu remained unchanged. In the end, Xiaomi Redmi Pro is quite a controversial device. The hardware here is not the fastest for the price to pay and also very power consuming, those shows not the best autonomy. Xiaomi decided to save money on the screen and install the worst solid matter ever seen. The dual camera, which is supposed to be the main feature, in fact appeared to be dull and the associated software runs out of straight. On the other hand, if you don't mind one camera feature, not an eager gamer and don't have special requirements for the display quality, the device is made for you. It has a very good fingerprint scanner, loud and high quality speaker, pleasant sound in headphones and personally for me the most beautiful body among all Xiaomi smartphones for the last year. Xiaomi Redmi Pro costs about 2 20 bucks. As its sales have only just begun, there is a good chance that soon the smartphone will become slightly cheaper, which will make an adequate solution to buy it, especially since the same Meizu MX6 and Pro 6 are more expensive. Links to the shops where you can buy this smartphone are in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button and subscribe for our channel. See ya!